We're now going to look at our drafting settings in AutoCAD Electrical. As per previous exercises, our drafting settings are down here on the status bar. You can see there as I move along, it's hovering over each button. The buttons are set to display the words on each button rather than the icon setting. Just makes life that little bit easier for training purposes. When I tell you to click on the infer button, you can find it nice and quickly. Going to work from left to right, so I'm going to select infer there and click on it. You'll see that infer constraints is now on. I'm also going to switch on polar to allow me to draw an exact vertical line. We'll look at polar later, so don't worry, I'll explain how it works later on. Into the drawing area, you'll also notice that DYN, dynamic, is on in the drafting settings. That's dynamic input. I never ever turn dynamic input off. You'll see why when we go into dynamic input later when we discuss more of the drafting settings. OK, I'm in my drawing area. I'm going to go straight over to the line command here. That's on the draw panel there on the home tab on the ribbon. Click on line, come into the drawing area, dynamic input there. It's on the crosshair asking me to specify that first point. So what I'm going to do is click up here and the polar tracking kicks in with that green dashed line and it tells me that I'm exactly at an angle of 90 degrees. Can you see that? So as I drag downwards now, that blue highlighted distance can be typed in. I'm going to type in 5 and press Enter. And then I'm going to press Enter again, and that closes the line command. OK, so I've got a line there, but I've got this funny little icon here telling me that that is a vertical constraint. So what's happened? Because I've got Infer switched on, that's seen that I've drawn that line vertically and locked it vertically. If I now select that line by putting the crosshair on it and clicking on it, I get three grips. Two endpoint grips and a midpoint grip. Now, if I click on this endpoint grip, if I didn't have a constraint, it would allow me to drag the end of the line and change the angle of the line. But because I've got a vertical constraint in there, it doesn't matter where I put that line, it will always be vertical. I can drag the end up. Look, can you see the end is moving? I can make the line shorter, but I cannot change its vertical orientation. That's because of the constraint. I'll just hit escape there to deselect that line. If I right click and repeat line and then draw a horizontal line and again lock it in with the polar tracking to zero degrees like that and then press enter to finish the line. If I click on this line and click on this grip, you'll see it's the same. It remains horizontal. I can change the length and move it around, but it'll always be horizontal. Now, I've still got that horizontal line selected. If I hover over the little icon and close it there, you'd think that that would lose the constraint, wouldn't you? Click on the grip. No. All that does is it hides the constraint bar for that particular line. So there's still a constraint on there. You can see when I hover over it, you get that funny little blue symbol there saying that it's constrained. So these constraints are very useful if you want your circuitry, let's say your wiring, to remain horizontal or vertical. To actually delete a constraint, you need to click on it. There it is again. Right click and delete the constraint like that. Now it has gone. And when I click on the grip, you'll see I can change the angle of the line because it's not constrained anymore. So let's just repeat that one more time. I'll just hit escape to deselect that line. If I click on this line here and with the constraint in place, click on a grip, it'll always be vertical. I'll hit escape there. If I hover over it there and click on the cross, that hides the constraint bar. If I click on the line again, though, the constraint bar comes back. If I right click on the constraint bar and delete on the shortcut menu, that then removes the constraint and it becomes a normal line again. So those constraints are very useful if you want to infer constraints and make sure that your lines perform the same way all the time, regardless of what you do edit wise with the grips. Great for vertical and horizontal circuitry in AutoCAD Electrical.